Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the Treasure Island where we're checking out Gelly's Barbecue. Super happy to have you along, let's head inside. All right everyone, here we are seated at Gilly's Las Vegas. Now this is a really fun location, half restaurant, half saloon, where on the saloon side you've got bull riding as well as line dancing lessons, full service bars, and in general just a very fun atmosphere. And over here in the restaurant section, it's a little quieter, but still following along with that western theme. A really nice restaurant here, Gilly's, I like the vibe. Now as fun as a place might look, it's all about the food for me, so let's take a look at what they're offering here at Gilly's, starting with the drinks. And here is your drink menu at Gilly's Las Vegas. Looks like we have some Texas teas and Lone Star lemonades at the top left there, as well as some frozen classics. You've got your cocktails as well as beer here in the center. And some uh, additional specials down here. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you'd like to take a look at these drinks. Very nice. Now that's the drink menu here at Gilly's. I've got work in the morning, so I don't think I'll be doing any alcohol tonight. So let's take a look at what they have to eat next. And here is your food menu at Gilly's Las Vegas. Starting off at the top, we've got some beginnings to share, your appetizers here. Looks like some uh, chili as well as salads. Our sides and beverages down here. Coming up top, we've got some burgers, as well as sandwiches and handhelds. We've got a barbecue list here, fairly limited barbecue list actually. And then we have your entrees down here. And there's your menu. Now that's a pretty good looking barbecue menu here at Gilly's Las Vegas and I'm certainly excited to try some food out because you know how it goes in my videos, every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm going to get a nice variety and together we'll see what this restaurant's all about. Appetizers are coming up first, I'll see you in a little bit when they arrive. Welcome back everyone, now my appetizers just got here and this is looking great, let me give you a view. I got their Texas Nachos Grande, as well as some Southern Style Chicken Tenders, and an order of their onion rings. A nice looking way to start off the meal here, let's go in. First up, we're going in on their Texas Nachos. Topped with chili and cheese, olives, jalapenos, as well as a pico de gallo. And it's looking like some pretty good nachos, let's give it a shot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Starting off with the tortilla chips, they've got an excellent crunch, not stale at all. And while I'd say they're imparting a little bit of a corn flavor, I wouldn't say it's anything predominant here. The chili on top of the nachos are actually quite nice. It's very beefy and savory, with a little bit of a woodsy note as well. I'm curious if there's some cinnamon in that chili. I actually really like the cheese sauce here. It's salty and rich, and you get a little bit of earthiness coming from the kidney beans in that chili. I got a little bit more of the brininess of the olive toward the middle of the bite. And interestingly enough, these jalapenos are not all that spicy. There was actually just a little bit of a lingering heat in the aftertaste. A little bit of cooling richness also from that sour cream. And while I wouldn't say this is anything super special, it is a good plate of nachos here. I like this one. Alrighty, next up we're going in on the onion rings. Honestly, these are looking pretty standard. Hopefully they're good and let's give it a shot. Yeah, not bad. These are very clearly pre-packaged and frozen onion rings, but that said, they're completely fine. A great fry job on those onion rings, excellent crunch, and you definitely get a little bit of sweetness from the onions inside. These onion rings are well seasoned, I wouldn't say they're bland by any means, but in general just very standard onion rings here, no complaints. Now they are served along ranch dressing as well as barbecue sauce. I'm more of a ranch guy when it comes to my onion rings, so we'll give it a little dip and give it a taste. Okay, I actually really like the ranch. Not only is it rich and creamy, but it actually has a very tangy flavor. It adds a really nice dimension to these onion rings, combating a little bit of that salty with that cool creamy tanginess. That's actually quite good, I like the ranch here. And the last appetizer I'm trying for today are the chicken strips. Picking these up, I'm pretty sure these are also pre-packaged frozen chicken strips here. But honestly, I have grew up eating a ton of these, so I don't mind all that much, hopefully it's good. Yep, as expected. 
These are 100% pre-packaged and frozen chicken strips here. But like the case of the onion rings, I'm actually not all that offended. They're excellently fried, nice crisp on the outside. And the chicken, while it's a tad greasy, it's certainly not dry. I want to say this tastes like a very standard chicken strip when it comes to the seasoning. The usual suspects are here, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. But I wouldn't say this is anything super special, just a very standard chicken strip. Now it is served alongside some ranch dressing as well as hot sauce. Now I already know that ranch is good, so we're gonna try it with the hot sauce here. And we give this a try. Oh yeah, that's good. I believe this is Frank's Red Hot Sauce, which I'm actually a huge fan of. Nice spice levels, a little bit of tang from some vinegar and just slightly more thick than a watery sauce, really coating these chicken strips and certainly giving much more depth of flavor than them being on their own. And I already know that the ranch is good, so putting the two together is probably gonna be a really fine treat. Not bad at all. All right, everyone, now that's all the appetizers I'm trying today. I'm gonna take a couple more bites and then pack this all up to go because we've got a ton of food coming. Don't go anywhere, handhelds are coming up next. Welcome back everyone, now the handhelds just got here. This is looking great, let me give you a view. I got the Lone Star Burger as well as their brisket sandwich and their Chipotle chicken sandwich as well. Handhelds come with fries, although you can upgrade to any of their sides for $3. So I decided to upgrade one of these with the tater tots. This is all looking really great, let's give it a try. First up, we're going in on the burger. Now this is the Lone Star Burger served with your choice of cheese. I opted for American today. I believe it also comes with bacon. Although I will say that the bun feels a little extra toasty here. Hopefully it's good, let's give it a shot. Hmm. You know, unfortunately that's not all that great. Now a lot of the burger elements here are actually quite good. I asked for my burger cooked medium today and they absolutely nailed a nice hot pink center. And I'd say that burger meat is actually quite well seasoned also. The vegetables taste fresh enough, I do get a nice bite from that raw onion and a little bit of sweetness from the tomato here. There's certainly a salty hit that's coming from the bacon and a little bit of a richness that does come from the American cheese here. The unfortunate thing here is that they've absolutely nuked the bun. Although the flavors of the rest of the burger are pretty good up front, I'm left with a charcoal-like aftertaste that's really unpleasant. You know, I'd say that's actually a pretty big technical error. I'm surprised they left this one out of the kitchen. I'm gonna try some of the accompanying fries. These look pretty standard to me. Let's see how they taste. meeting expectations. We have another round of pre-made frozen sides here. I suppose it's a bit of a theme here at Gillies. But that said, just like all the other pre-packaged frozen entrees, I'm not terribly offended by this. A nice fry job here, they're certainly crispy. Although maybe a little bit more of a chewy center than I would like. And not exactly the most pillowy center, but they're soft enough. And nice salt levels as well. Honestly, I don't have any serious complaints about these french fries, they're fine. Next up, we're doing the brisket sandwich. I gotta tell you, this bun is actually quite soggy. I imagine there's a lot of moisture in the sandwich. And hopefully it's good, let's give it a try. You know, that's pretty tasty. I actually really like the brisket here. It's incredibly soft and tender. I actually pulled out a piece here so you can take a look. It's got a nice smoke ring and good moisture levels as well, not dry brisket at all. I actually really like the protein. A good beefy flavor to that brisket. I actually like that part quite a bit. Now the barbecue sauce here at Gillies isn't bad at all. Although it definitely leans toward the sweeter side, there's certainly a nice tang here to that barbecue sauce. As well as a bit of a smoky flavor, it's a solid barbecue sauce. There's something like a chipotle mayonnaise in here, providing a little bit of kick and some creaminess, and it provides a very nice richness to the sandwich. There's a jicama slaw in here that I'm actually really enjoying. It has an additional tang coming from some vinegar, helping break up a lot of that sweet and savory. And the crunchy texture of that jicama is actually providing a nice breakup for the overall sandwich as well. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the bun, they actually burned this one as well. Although slightly less than the burger and with all the bold flavors in the sandwich, it actually does mask it pretty well. But some pretty good flavors here. I actually do like the sandwich. Next up, I'm gonna try the accompanying side. This is a Southwest Tater Tot. Now, as mentioned before, all of the handhelds come with fries. However, you can upgrade to any of their additional side for $3 more. I thought three rounds of fries would be a little much, so I went with the tater tots here. Let's see how these taste. You know, that's actually quite tasty. I don't know if I would necessarily classify these as tater tots. 
but naming aside, they're actually pretty good. A super crispy exterior that's been well seasoned and has a nice crunch to it. You have something like a potato and jack cheese mixture in the center here, providing a little bit of kick as well as some richness to that starch. Just a little bit spicy as well as some salty potato flavors here. In general, it's actually quite enjoyable. I like this side. All right, everyone, now the last handheld I'm trying today is the Chipotle chicken sandwich. Absolutely massive Chipotle chicken sandwich here. And hopefully this is good. Let's give it a taste. You know, I'd say that's just okay. Now, while I wouldn't classify the chicken exactly as dry, it's certainly not the moistest grilled chicken I've ever had. And I also think it's a tad under seasoned. There is a white cheddar cheese in here that's providing a little bit of a rich hit, although it's a little more faint and only really present in the middle of the bite. The avocados are providing a nice creaminess here. And like all the other sandwiches, I don't have too many issues when it comes to the vegetables. There is some good saltiness coming from the bacon here. I think their chipotle mayonnaise isn't too bad. It's got a nice heat level and has a nice creamy texture. But there's also a bit of a sweet element in there and I'm not sure if that's working too well with the rest of the flavors of the sandwich. Now, unfortunately, the aftertaste is, again, just pure burnt carbon. The bun here was way overdone. It's quite unsatisfactory toward the end, especially in that aftertaste. It's just not all that pleasant. Even outside of the big technical error with the burnt buns, I think this particular sandwich recipe is just okay. Okie doke, everyone. Now, that's all of the handhelds I'm trying today. Some pretty big technical missteps with the burnt buns, but it is what it is. I'm gonna take a couple more bites and then pack this all up to go because I've got another round of food coming. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now my last round of food is here and this is looking great. Let me give you a view. Now I got an order of the baby back ribs as well as some fried chicken and rounding out the final dish with their salmon. Got a nice assortment of sides with the mac and cheese, cheddar grits, whipped potatoes and cream corn. Certainly ready to try out this food. Let's give it a shot. Now first up from this last round of entrees, I'm trying the salmon Veracruz. This had the crispiest skin as I was cutting it with my fork and knife and it smells really great. Let's give it a try. Okay, that's really good. Easily the best prepared dish I've had so far. That salmon skin is wonderfully crispy with the most delicate, flaky, and moist center I've had in a while on a salmon fish. It's an immaculate cook. My hat's off to the chef on this one. The Veracruz sauce on top of the salmon is very flavorful. You have a nice floral hit coming from the capers and a natural sweetness from the tomato-based sauce. There's a little bit of a brininess from something like olives with a really great seasoning blend. It's got a lot of depth. Easily the best tasting dish I've had so far. This is a really good one. Alrighty, next up we're going in on their fried chicken. Now order comes with half a bird. I think that's pretty generous for Las Vegas. And you can certainly tell that this was hand breaded given where the gaps are in the coating. And it feels super crispy and piping hot in my hands. Let's give it a taste. You know what, not bad. There is a nice fry job to this chicken, a great crunch to that exterior. Now, while this was hand breaded, I kind of wish there was a little bit more seasoning in that breading because the flavors there are relatively plain. While I wouldn't call the recipe bland, I do want to say it's just a bit uninteresting. The chicken meat in the center, while I wouldn't say it's incredibly juicy, it's not too dry. It still falls apart easily in the bite, but just a little bit of additional moisture, and I think this could be really enjoyable chicken. You know, in general here, I wouldn't say it's bad. I just think it's very, very standard. Next up, I'm gonna try one of the two sides I got with the fried chicken. This is their mashed potatoes. It felt really creamy as I was spooning it up. And hopefully this is good, let's give it a try. Oh yeah, I actually really like those. While I wouldn't exactly call the texture velvety like you might find at an ultra luxe high-end restaurant, the smooth creamy nature of these mashed potatoes are actually very enjoyable. There's so much butter in these mashed potatoes, it's providing a really nice rich flavor. Well seasoned also, these are very tasty mashed potatoes. I actually don't have any complaints, I really like these. Next up, I'm trying their Southwest corn. I already see little bits of pepper flakes in here, so I'm expecting some meat. And in general, I'm a huge fan of cream corn. Hopefully this is good. Oh yeah, that's really tasty. A wonderful cook on that corn. While it's soft to chew through, it actually has a little bit of a firmness on the outside making for a nice enjoyable bite. 
There's a nice smoky heat right up front when it comes to those grilled peppers. It really sets up your palate for a lot of what's to come. That heat is almost instantly mellowed out by a lot of the cream flavors here in the corn, and then it rounds out with its natural sweetness. There's a really nice savory seasoning here. Smoky, creamy, then a little bit sweet, while maintaining a nice savory line along the entire way. It's very good. I like the Southwestern Korean corn side. All right, everyone, now the last entree I'm trying today are the baby back ribs. Got a nice end bone here and a really great smoky aroma coming off of this. Let's give it a try. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Ultra tender rib meat here. You can see how cleanly it falls off the bone. They definitely gave this the proper amount of time to cook. Very satisfying, no real chewiness to it. Good barbecue here. I'm very intrigued with the spice blend that they use on these ribs because there's a very distinct sweetness to it. It's not exactly a straight sugary sweetness that you might think when hearing the description. I want to say it's closer to a little bit of a nutty sweetness like if you were to caramelize some brown sugar. It actually adds a very interesting dimension right up front when it comes to these ribs. I actually do like that quite a bit. Now the barbecue sauce has mentioned before leans very sweet here at Gilly's. However, the barbecue sauce on the ribs have had a chance to caramelize much more than the previous iteration that I had on the brisket, which goes along nicely with the ribs here. There is just a hint of spice on the back end. I want to say there's a little bit of cayenne in that rub. And in general, these are very enjoyable. I like the ribs. Next up, I'm trying one of the two sides that I chose with the ribs. This is the mac and cheese. They have wagon wheel pasta here, which I have not seen in forever. I'm such a huge fan. Let's see how these taste. Oh yeah, very good. A nice cook to those wagon wheel pasta noodles. Certainly softer than al dente, but I wouldn't say they're disintegrating by any means. The cheese sauce here is something along the lines of a bechamel sauce. It definitely has a little bit of a thicker roux base, a good creamy texture, and a nice salty hit from that cheese sauce. I do like the fact that they provided a baking finish to this mac and cheese, giving a little bit of that nutty toast on the top. I actually don't have any serious complaints. This is a good mac and cheese side. All right, my friends, now the last bite I'm trying from the food today is gonna be their white cheddar and chili grits. Got a nice amount on the fork here. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. A good rustic grainy texture to those grits. They have a solid cook, no real complaints there. I actually love how incorporated the flavors of the white cheddar and the green chilies are here. They're not accent flavors, they're actually very well infused into the grits. The flavors are present from the beginning to the end, and the salty richness of the white cheddar along with the smoky heat of those green chilies actually provides a very nice balanced flavor profile to these grits. I do think it could use just a little bit of additional salt and pepper, but in general, not bad at all. These are actually pretty good grits. All right, everyone, now that's all of the food I'm trying today. I am so full. I think I'm gonna burst here pretty soon. So I think I'm gonna go and just take a few more bites, pack it all up to go, and then we'll do a little bit of dessert. Don't go anywhere, sweets are coming up next. Welcome back everyone. Now my dessert just got here and this is looking great. Let me give you a view. Now here at Gilly's Vegas, you have your choice between chocolate cake, cheesecake, as well as key lime pie. I opted for the key lime pie today. Now I've got a nice spoonful here. I'm so full, but there's always room for some sweets, right? Let's activate the dessert stomach and give this a shot. Oh, you know, I'd say that's just okay. I'd say for about 75% of that bite, all I tasted was graham cracker crust. And while it does have a nice sweet nutty flavor, I think it's called key lime pie, not key graham cracker pie. The pie portion, while it is very creamy and smooth, it doesn't impart a ton of lime flavor. You get just a little bit of sour tartness, maybe in the last third of your chew. And even then, I would say it's very faint. I want a lot more flavor there. You know, unfortunately, I wouldn't say that that's one of my favorite key lime pies. All right, everyone, now that does it for my dinner here at Gilly's Las Vegas. My meal came out to $237 today before tip, and I'll say this is a very fun spot. The saloon section here at Gilly's has so much energy. I really liked it over there. If I ever feel like going in for some free line dancing lessons or trying riding a mechanical bull, I think I know the spot. That said, I'd say the food is kind of hit or miss. I didn't have any particular issues with the appetizers, but I didn't think anything was super special. All of the handheld buns being burnt, unfortunately, was a pretty big travesty for me. 
and while off camera I would probably ask for that to be refired. When I'm here to make a video, I already got what I wanted out of the whole transaction, so I don't want them to have to refire any food because that can go to someone else. I will say the ribs were pretty good here, but the salmon was absolutely my favorite dish of the night. It was incredibly flavorful, and being that it's not exactly on theme with the rest of the menu, I was very surprised that that was my favorite item. Now I will say my server Wendy was fantastic. She was very attentive, super prompt with everything. I really enjoyed her service today. All in all, I'd say the food here is just okay, but if you're in for some fun vibes and you're already near the Treasure Island, I think there's a lot of good times to be had here. Now that's gonna do it for the Saturday video here on the Las Vegas Strip. Coming this Tuesday, I'm gonna be checking out another local eatery here in the Valley. I hope you'll come back for that one. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I hope you enjoy Vegas with me. Chin, bye.